Thank you. The next item of business is a statement by Shona Robinson on tackling child poverty delivery plan fourth year progress report 2021 to 2022. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I call on Shona Robinson uh, to make the statement. Up to 10 minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, uh, President Officer. Today I have published the fourth annual progress report uh, due under the Child Poverty Scotland Act 2017. This is the final uh, report of progress delivered against Every Child, Every Chance, our first tackling child poverty delivery plan, and it summarises the progress delivered across 2021-22 and the key milestones that we have achieved since the plan was published in 2018. In the past year, we have continued to address the impacts of COVID and support recovery from that. We have also helped families facing increased household costs through our winter support fund. The report uh, showcases that the breadth of activi activity underway, supported by partnerships across Scotland, it highlights that we have delivered upon all 68 of the actions uh, committed to. This includes the additional actions committed since the plan was first published. The report sets out the latest estimates of spend targeted, uh, targeted support to low-income households, with almost £2.6 billion of spend targeted in this way in 2021-22, of which over 1.1 billion benefited children. Across the, the four years of Every Child, Every Chance, we have estimated to have targeted almost £8.5 billion to low-income households, of which nearly £3.3 billion benefited children. The report also presents the latest available data on persistent poverty for children, which shows a marked drop compared to previous estimates from 15 per cent to 10 per cent. Now, whilst that is welcome, further data will be required to determine how much of this observed fall is due to real change and will be sustained in coming years. We anticipate being able to publish updated statistics against all measures in March 2023. Uh, President officer, over the last year, we have continued to uh, deliver for children and families across Scotland. We have continued to increase incomes through Social Security. Following the, the launch of the Scottish Child Payment in February 2021, we have gone on to award £55.1 million to low-income families in 2021-22, providing support to an estimated 103,000 children as uh, of the end of March 2022. Through bridging payments, we put almost £80 million into the pockets of low-income families with school-aged children, providing up to £520 for each eligible child, with 148,500 benefiting as of spring 2022. We expanded eligibility for the child winter heating assistance to a further 4,500 young people in receipt of the personal independence payment and launched both child disability payment and the pilot of adult disability payment. And supported by our investment, 139 GP surgeries in the most deprived areas now have welfare advisors in place, providing access to advice in the places that people go. In addition to support financial wellbeing and recovery from the COVID pandemic, we put over £68.9 million in the pockets of Scottish households through low-income pandemic payments. Uh, we have uh, delivered action to address the impact of cost of living and to reduce household costs. This includes uh, delivering 1,140 hours of funded early learning and childcare hours across Scotland as of August 2021. The latest data from January 2022 shows that 88% of children are accessing the full 1140 hours, estimated to save families up to £4,900 per child in 2021. We expanded the universal provision of free school meals to all children in, uh, children in primaries four and five, uh, provided alternate free school meal provision and school holidays to around 144,000 children from low-income families, and further increased the value of the school clothing grant to £120 for eligible children in primary school and £150 for those in secondary. And from the 31st of January this year, we extended concessionary travel to under 22s living in Scotland with approximately 930,000 young people eligible for support estimated to save families up to £3,000 by the time their child turns 18. We have also supported more parents to increase their earnings from employment by continuing to deliver support through devolved employability services and through our focus on fair work. And this includes strengthening our fair work first criteria 
to include offering flexible and family-friendly working to all workers from day one of employment, increasing the take-home pay of over 7,600 workers through living wage accreditation and launching the Real Living Hours accreditation campaign. Beyond these steps, we also invested £41 million in our winter support fund to help low-income households impacted by rising living and fuel costs. Presiding officer, every child every chance was published shortly after the ambitious child poverty targets were set in statute in this parliament, marking a change in focus and approach to tackling child poverty in Scotland. The plan set out the three key drivers of child poverty reduction, focusing on work and earnings, social security and household costs. It also set out the need to focus efforts on the six priority family types at greatest risk of poverty. Whilst the, the world was very different when Every Child, Every Chance was published, these have remained constant and remain vital to our approach. Over this time, we have built our collective understanding and awareness of poverty and have strengthened the foundations of support that already existed in Scotland, using powers devolved to this Parliament to go further than ever, than ever before. This includes establishing our devolved social security system and delivering 12 benefits, of which seven are entirely new and not available anywhere else in the UK, including our Scottish child payment. With these powers, we are providing unparalleled financial support across the early years, which by the end of this year will be worth a maximum of over £10,000 for a family's first child by the time they turn six and over £8,200 more than that than is available anywhere else in the UK. We have delivered devolved employability services based on dignity and respect and have continued to do everything we can to promote fair work, despite key powers over employment being reserved to the UK Government. We have almost doubled funded childcare hours, significantly increasing school clothing grants, and have delivered over 9,757 affordable homes, of which 7,306 were for social rent. In addition, we have taken key steps to strengthen our overall approach to child poverty. This includes establishing our statutory poverty and inequality commission. And we reached our groundbreaking agreement with the Scottish Green Party, setting out our shared focus on tackling child poverty and influencing key measures, including free bus travel for under 22s and, of course, our commitment to mitigate the benefit cap. The progress we have made has been despite significant challenges. COVID has changed all of our lives uh, immeasurably and disproportionately impacted the most disadvantaged in our society. We have seen the continued impact of UK government welfare cuts and austerity over the last year in particular. Recent analysis highlighted that were the UK government welfare cuts imposed since 2015 to be reversed, this would put an additional £780 million in the pockets of Scottish households in 2023-24, helping to lift 70,000 people out of poverty, including 30,000 children. Presiding officer, in 2021-22, not only did we continue to deliver progress against our first Tackling Child Poverty Delivery Plan, we worked together with partners to develop our second Tackling Child Poverty Delivery Plan for the period to 2026. Published in March, Best Start Bright Futures builds on the strong foundations laid by Every Child, Every Chance, setting out our ambitious action to drive progress towards the targets and to lift thousands of children out of poverty backed by up to 113 million of additional investment this year. The plan outlines how we will work in partnership across Scotland, including the public, private and third sectors and with communities to take forward our national mission. We know that COVID has impacted on the delivery of key commitments, including our affordable housing supply programme and the parental employability support fund. Through Best Start Right Futures, we have set out how we will regain lost ground and go on uh, to scale up the impact of key programmes, including through our new employability offer to parents. We have, from April, doubled the Scottish Child Payment to £20 per week per child, which will rise to £25 by the end of the year. We have also increased the value of a further eight Scottish Social Security benefits by 6 per cent, providing much needed support to families. Our commitment to tackling child poverty is underpinned by the recently published Resource Spending Review, setting out high-level plans for how funding will be invested in the coming years to meet our priorities. 
Presiding officer, the progress report published today sets out the considerable action which has been delivered since 2018, resulting in strengthened support for children and families across Scotland. This Government is absolutely committed to tackling child poverty and is now focusing on the implementation and delivery of Best Start Bright, Bright Futures, building on the foundations of the past four years and the significant learning from this time. I look forward to taking questions from members in relation to the progress delivered over this reporting period. Thank you. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which time we will move on to the next item of business. And it would be helpful if those members who wish to ask a question were to press their request to speak buttons now. I call Miles Briggs. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement? Uh, there is, though, one group of children and young people which have not merited a, a comment today by the Cabinet Secretary, and that is the number of children living in temporary accommodation in Scotland. I have raised this consistently with the Cabinet Secretary and make no apologies of doing that again. Because we see today in Scotland 7,500 children living in temporary accommodation, many of whom are being housed there for months and years. A typical stay for a family now has doubled to over 58 weeks. It is rightly described as a national disgrace. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary whether or not she thinks it is acceptable and whether or not ministers will now look at proposals to implement a ban on children being placed in temporary accommodation? Cabinet Secretary. Um, so I, I agree with Miles Briggs uh, on this point, and that is that we know that the number of households in temporary accommodation is too high and that we're firmly committed to reducing it. Uh, alongside our ambitious programme of affordable house building, we are providing uh, £52.5 million for local authorities to implement their rapid rehousing transition plans and housing first approaches. He will be aware that there is a working group with a lot of expertise looking at what more can be done uh, to tackle what is a, a difficult issue, particularly in some parts of Scotland. It is not uniform everywhere. Um, and I met with uh, the key people uh, from that group uh, just a couple of weeks ago to hear about the progress of their work. We know that housing is absolutely a key part of our mission to tackle child poverty and that is reflected in the resource spending review with increased resources uh, to prevent homelessness and to provide more warm, affordable homes. So we will continue uh, to do that. My only final observation is that there has to be a consistency of policy uh, programme here and I would gently suggest to Miles Briggs that having a commitment to allow the sale of um, housing association properties uh, would not be a good way to go down. Well, I'm glad that Miles Briggs is saying that is not a, a way that uh, would be followed in Scotland because obviously, as Prime Minister has set out, that is the way that they will be going in England and it would be heartening to hear more uh, from Miles Briggs uh, on that because I don't think we've heard much from him on that because we cannot allow homes that are built under the affordable housing programme to be lost in the same way as that council houses were lost up to about 500,000, I think, if I can recall correctly. But I will continue to give my focus to tackling temporary accommodation um, and to make sure that the working group gets our full support in coming up with the solutions required. I call Pam Duncan Glancy. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement. Deputy Presiding Officer, the tone of the statement we just heard was celebratory, but this is no time to pat ourselves on the back. 260,000 children are still in poverty in Scotland. A report published last week by the JRF and Save the Children said we are unlikely to meet our targets and described this government's approach to tackling poverty as good on diagnosis, short on prescription. The SNP have chosen to close their eyes and hope for the best. We are in a cost of living crisis. There is no fair wind. This is not a good day. The government must do more. They cannot rely on hope and optimism alone. Now more than ever, we need real concrete action on all of the drivers of poverty. But where is it? We can't wait until the next delivery plan to identify what more there is, that is needed. By then, it's going to be too late. And it's not just me saying that. That's the government's own Poverty and Inequality Commission saying that too. People across Scotland need to know what the government is going to do to lift them out of poverty. So I ask the Cabinet Secretary today, when will the government acknowledge the gravity and the, the scale and pace that is required in this situation? Start using all the powers of this parliament to address it. And what will they do to do that right now? Cabinet Secretary. So, first of all, I 
do not accept that my statement was celebratory. I think what it tried to do was to set out the measures that we have taken, both uh, in relation to the first child poverty delivery plan and then to, uh, ex to set out uh, how we uh, segment into the second uh, child poverty delivery plan, Best Up Right Futures, and essentially ending with that we have now to implement that in order to continue uh, to tackle child poverty. I do not think that is celebrated. I think it was just setting out uh, the facts of what we have done. Now, in terms of what we have done, I, again, I, I do not think it is fair. Uh, a fair representation to say that we are not uh, doing everything we can. Through the budget for 2022-23, the Scottish Government has allocated almost £3 billion to a range of supports that will contribute to mitigating the impact of the increased cost of living on households. This includes work to tackle child poverty, to reduce inequalities and support financial wellbeing alongside social security payments not available anywhere else in the UK. And if you see through the resource spending review that social security is where the main bulk of the spend uh, is being made uh, here uh, in the Scottish Parliament, that is where the direction of travel of funding is. Um, and I would have thought that you know, there's always more to do, and I, I'll never disagree with Pam Duncan Glancy on that. But just occasionally, it would be good for some acknowledgement of the, uh, the action that has been taken, um, that has not been taken anywhere else in these islands. I call Ruth Maguire, who's joining us remotely, to be followed by Rachel Hamilton. Ms Maguire. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The, the, the Cabinet Secretary outlined line there the amount of support the Scottish Government is providing to mitigate the impact of the, the cost of living crisis and also mentioned social security. Um, too many people are missing out on UK government benefits. How can we encourage benefit take up at both Scottish and UK level? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, Ruth Maguire uh, makes an important point, and we do need to encourage uh, the take-up uh, of benefits and promote that. Obviously, she will be aware that we have uh, had a benefit take-up campaign um, and have funded um, a number of advice workers that are referred to in my statement in order to try and get to people who um, are perhaps visiting their GP surgery to make them aware of what their entitlements are. Uh, are. Uh, we are looking at the moment of what more we can do uh, in order to um, make sure that there uh, is easily accessible uh, information and advice around the, the myriad of supports that there are, not just uh, available through Scottish Government supports, but also uh, UK uh, uh, welfare supports and indeed those that are rooted through local government. So that work is ongoing uh, to look at how we can make sure that we can promote uh, that so that everybody who is entitled to get some of that support uh, gets it. And I'm happy to keep Ruth Maguire appraised of, of that work. I call Rachel Hamilton to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Amendments to extend free school meal provision in Scotland were voted down by the SNP and Greens in the Good Food Nation Bill. So when will the Scottish Government commit to extending free school meals uh, and that provision beyond P4 and 5 so that we can help alleviate poverty and make sure young people don't go hungry? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, so let me say uh, this government has a proud record of expanding free school meals provision as part of the wider action to tackle food, food insecurity, uh, to cut the cost of the school day and to help reduce uh, the poverty-related attainment gap. Uh, Scotland's uh, offer of universal free school meals in primary one to five and those in special schools is the most generous universal offer in the UK far beyond what is offered uh, in England, where her party are, of course, in power. And we are committed to expanding free school meals uh, provision further. Um, there is money in the budget for uh, capital to expand uh, the provision in um, uh, school kitchens ahead of the rollout of that further expansion. Uh, and this is in addition to over £169 million provided to support provision of free school meals uh, during term time and nearly £22 million of funding to provide free school meal alternatives to eligible families in the school holidays, regardless of the age of their children. So there is always more to be done, but I think it would be extremely unfair uh, to not recognise the work that this government has done on free school meal provision. 
I call Fulton McGregor to be followed by Carol Mochan. Yeah, thank you, President Officer. Uh, reducing the cost of uniforms for families was specifically cited within the child poverty delivery plan. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary how the Scottish Government intends to raise awareness on the school uniform guidance consultation, which opened recently, and how this fits in and interacts with other investment the Scottish Government is making to help deliver the main aims of the plan? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, as our progress report sets out, we have invested almost £8.5 billion in support targeted towards low-income households uh, across 2018 to 22, uh, of which £3.3 .3 billion benefited uh, children. Uh, we are determined to put money into the pockets of families as well as reducing household costs. And this includes, of course, the important element of reducing the cost of the school day. Uh, which is why we have increased the value of the school clothing grants over the past four years to a minimum award of £100 per eligible child in 2018, and further increasing this to £120 for primary school children and £150 for secondary. Uh, we have set out our intention to bring forward new guidance on school uniforms, aiming to reduce costs and ensure that the money families have goes further. Uh, we are engaging with a wide range of stakeholders and will continue to promote the consultation. I call Cara Mochan to be followed by Sean Brown. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. Um, child poverty figures and indeed uh, some of the estimated figures in Scotland highlight the true scale of the problem facing thousands of families across the country. And I want to back up my colleague here to say that I do find the front bench on this quite self-congratulatory. Um, and you know, we need to be much much stricter with ourselves in this parliament about how serious this is and that we should be talking about the things that need to actually happen. The Minister has not mentioned another group, and that is the priority children's group living in poverty. There are far too many children living in poverty in Scotland today, but inequalities mean that disabled children, those from ethnic minority backgrounds, lone parent families, we know that they need extra support, and it has not been addressed. Can the Minister set out a clear strategy to support these children and families? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, again, I... I just don't think that's a fair representation of what I was setting out. The statement today is an account of what has been done uh, in the delivery of the first child poverty statement. Now, all I can, uh, the delivery plan, sorry, all I can do is to set out uh, and report on, as I am required to do under the Act, on what we have done. And uh, surely uh, Carol Morgan would, would be complaining if I wasn't doing that as per the requirements under the Act. So I've tried to set out what we have done. Is there more to do? Of course there is more to do. And that's why we have committed the £3 billion in supporting low-income households. That is an extraordinary investment in a fixed budget with all of the pressures uh, in terms of inflation um, and all of the pressures on all budgets. That is an extraordinary investment and essentially is putting our money where our mouths are. Now, I could list, as I, you know, again, as I set out in my statement, all of the things that we are doing that form part of that £3 billion. But I think we have to get a balance here and we have to have a balance of, quite rightly, you holding us to account. That's what we're, we're here for uh, as ministers in the government. But just occasionally recognising that that is where we're putting the money. The resource spending review, and I know that members have complained about uh, money for other parts of government, because the money is going into supporting social security um, and tackling child poverty. And finally, on the point about the intersectionality uh, of uh, pe people with disabilities, disabled children, uh, children from a black and ethnic minority background, those are the six priority families that I referred to in my statement. The Child Poverty Delivery Plan, both of them, absolutely focus on those six priority families because we know they are more likely, including lone parents, to suffer poverty more. And that is why we have particularly targeted th uh, those children uh, through the plan. And hopefully that is something Carol Malkin could acknowledge. I call Siobhan Brown to be followed by Willie Rennie. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. New detailed analysis shows that independent European countries comparable to Scotland are both wealthier and fairer in the, than the UK. Poverty rates are lower in the comparator countries and there are fewer children living in poverty. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what would be the opportunities if we had these additional powers at our disposal? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we would have the, the full levers of a, a normal government that other governments across the world have to tackle uh, child poverty. We would have 
powers over all elements of social security and employment tax, and importantly, borrowing powers. Because at the moment, and as we know, we can see this very clearly through the fiscal framework, um, and this is very relevant in terms of our projected social security spend, that we do not have the borrowing powers to allow us to smooth out the peaks and troughs of uh, whether it is income uh, tax take or social security expenditure that every other government has. And in fact, local government has more powers in that respect than we have. So it is important. Uh, not as a, some kind of theoretical discussion, but actually about how uh, we would be able uh, to do far more beyond what we can do. And I have set out the extensive areas that we are already doing, but we could do far more moving away from a fixed block grant uh, based on what another government spends to be able to use our resources to better support Scotland's priorities. I call Willie Rennie to be followed by Maggie Chapman. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary is contradicting herself. In one breath, she says the statement is not self-congratulatory and celebratory, before asking Pam Duncan Glancy for appreciation for the work that she's done. She needs to make up her mind. 7,500 two-year-olds from disadvantaged backgrounds are not accessing their free 11.40 nursery hours. The take-up rate is terrible. What is the Cabinet Secretary doing about this, and where are we going to see progress? Cabinet Secretary. So, um, first of all, to correct Willie Rennie, I didn't ask Pam Duncan Glancy to congratulate the Scottish Government. What I ask is for a bit of balance of us saying, yes, there's more to do and we don't always get everything right and we want ideas from others, but occasionally just an acknowledgement of some of the things we are doing that are delivering for people in poverty, children in poverty, in Willie Rennie's constituency as well as elsewhere. And I don't know why Willie Rennie is shaking his head. I've outlined all of the measures that we're taking on supporting through the Scottish Child Payment, I would have thought that he would welcome the support that is going into the pockets of low-income households within uh, his uh, constituency. I have laid out uh, in my uh, remarks the support that we're giving uh, to uh, young people through uh, the work of the, the rollout of the uh, early learning uh, and childcare uh, support. Um, that is being uh, rolled out um, uh, in a way that has um, been supporting uh, a number of families. Um, we have been uh, investing roughly a uh, billion pounds per year in the delivery of funded ELC supporting children uh, and their families. The resource spending review has again uh, assumptions looking at how we build on that. Uh, we have also uh, have got commitments, of course, to build a system of school-age childcare uh, to support families with low incomes and develop a new offer of learning and childcare for one- and two-year-olds. Um, so that work is ongoing, um, and the um, number of children eligible two-year-olds accessing funded ELC, I can uh, tell him, rose uh, last year. Um, to 6,474 children in September 2021. That is an increase of 25 per cent year on year, equating to 1,611 more children accessing their entitlement. Again, more to be done, but hopefully, again, that is something that could be welcomed. And before I call uh, Mikey Chapman, I would just uh, make a plea to members. I have um, five members who still wish to ask their questions. I need to have short questions and short answers, please. Mikey Chapman, to be followed by Paul McLennan. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement. Under the lifetime of the Every Child, Every Chance plan, the Scottish Government supported many families hit by the UK Government's cruel benefit cap. Indeed, about 3,100 Scottish households, almost all of them with children, have been negatively impacted by the cap on universal credit alone. Thanks to the Greens working with the Scottish Government, that support will increase over the next four years. But can I ask the Cabinet Secretary for an update on the work and identifying of eligible families and getting this much needed support to them? And how can we build on the lessons learned from the welfare advisers' work to ensure everyone gets all the benefits to which they are entitled? Cabinet Secretary, I, I would say I, I, I did call for brief questions and answers. I do want to get all members in. If I don't get brief questions and answers, I don't get everybody in, and that's just the way it is. Cabinet Secretary, thank you. 
Well, I'll, I'll try and be brief, and I can obviously write to Michael Chapman with more detail. Uh, we are looking at the lessons learned from the advisers and how we can make sure that uh, there's going to be an evaluation of the, the work of that, and I can keep Michael Chapman uh, uh, appraised of that. In terms of the, the benefit cap, we are consulting with local authority partners on the best methodology for delivering this important po uh, policy, which is going to support around 4,000 families uh, once uh, rolled out. I call Paul McLennan to be followed by Oliver Mundell. Thank you. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what the measures the Scottish Government is taking to support parental employment as part of its support for priority families? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I think it was on the, but the family benefits. Sorry, I, I couldn't hear. That was. Sorry, the Scottish Government has taken to support parental employment as part of its support for priority families. Right, sorry. Um, yes, well, uh, key, clearly that is a key pla plank of the Child Poverty Del Delivery Plan. Building on the uh, work that has already been done around employability programmes, but making it far more bespoke uh, for families, because we do recognise that for many families, uh, they have not uh, found their way to the employability programmes because of all the barriers in their way. We need to understand what those barriers are. They may be childcare, they may be related to other uh, costs uh, that are prohibitive, and we want to work with families uh, by um, essentially making sure they have a, a key worker, support worker, to work with them to overcome any barriers that are particular to that family in order to help them get into employment. I call Oliver Mundell to be followed by Stephanie Callaghan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, pupil equity funding is allocated based on free school meals data. Given the known challenges with this measure, particularly in rural communities, will the Scottish Government look again at alternatives? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I think part of the problem that Oliver Mundell probably is aware of is the data. So we rely on free school meal data because that's available through local authorities. He will be aware of the discussions that are going on with the DWP, very productive, I have to say, in order to uh, make sure that we have uh, the data that we require, not least for the rollout of the Scottish Child Payment uh, at the end of this year, so that all children under 16 will be entitled to that payment. But we continue to look at whether there's other data that we can use, but it is a data source that is there uh, through local authorities that we can rely on at the moment. And I call Stephanie Callaghan. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline how much the Scottish Government is spending to mitigate UK Government policies and how this impacts on Scotland's child poverty targets? And what assessments has the Scottish Government made of the impact of UK Government welfare reform policies on child poverty in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, so in my uh, statement, I um, laid out the, uh, the, the UK Government since 2015 um, has... Um, put in place, um, had they reversed the welfare reform since then, um, we would, that would put an estimated £780 million in the pockets of Scottish households. That was the figure I, I gave in my statement, and that would help lift 30,000 children out of poverty. In terms of the mitigation, uh, we are providing uh, £83 million through discretionary housing payments in 2022-23 uh, to mitigate uh, UK government policies, um, the main one, of course, being the bedroom tax, which uh, takes about £68 million uh, to mitigate helping over 91,000 households sustain their tenancies. Again, something that does not help in terms of tackling um, the issues of uh, temporary accommodation. So if that was able to be um, resolved at source, uh, and we continue to discuss with the DWP uh, about that issue. In fact, we raised it with them at our last meeting. It also includes £7 million to mitigate the benefit cap as far as we are able within devolved powers. And again, that will help up to 4,000 families, many of whom are larger families, lone parent families. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes the ministerial statement. And there will be a very short pause before we move on to the next item of business. Thank you.